Good evening and welcome back to the show. Very glad you are with us. I am excited to welcome to the program Dr. Pradeep Nair. Welcome to the program. Thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. Well, you know, Doc, more than 20 million Americans suffer from uh, peripheral artery disease, uh, also known as PAD. And so you, as an interventional cardiologist with CIS, very glad to have you with us to, to look at some of the signs to look out for and what people at home, the public, really need to know. Sure. And so we call it PAD, those of us who are in the medical field, right. but it's peripheral, peripheral artery disease, correct? That's correct. Uh, you know, we, we can talk about peripheral artery disease in much the same way we talk about coronary artery disease. It's a process of atherosclerosis mm -hmm. uh, where you get clogging in the arteries uh, from cholesterol buildup. And uh, the issue with peripheral artery disease, and, and the reason it's so important, is that it's an epidemic. Uh, okay. 20 million people in the United States suffer from peripheral artery disease. And the fact of the matter is that treatments are significantly underutilized. A lot of patients go untreated, mm -hmm. undiagnosed. Uh, and if you look at it worldwide, you're looking at 100 to 200 million people. So in the, in the world, it is an epidemic. And I will say that um, with peripheral artery disease, one of the main thrusts of CIS is to raise awareness. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that my mentor, Dr. Walker, has taught me over the years uh, is the importance of identifying uh, peripheral artery disease. He's always taught me one lesson. The first lesson that he taught me when I came as his fellow was that uh, Pradeep, uh, uh, sick legs are never uh, attached to healthy people. And there's, mm. a, there's a reason a behind point. that. Yeah. You know, if you think about peripheral artery disease, you may not die from a blockage in the leg, but it is a marker for potentially blockages elsewhere because mm. it is what we term a polyvascular disease involving that most often involves multiple organ systems such as the heart uh, or the brain. Mm. So I think it's a very, very important disease process for our uh, patients to uh, understand. And so to help them understand, can we talk a little bit about what the symptoms of PAD are? Sure. So first of all, the vast majority of patients have very atypical symptoms. They okay. may not even know that they have PAD. Oh, okay. Uh, it often masquerades as uh, arthritis or low back pain. Uh, you know, they may notice that they're not able to their, their legs feel tired or fatigued, but cramping. the classic symptom is that my legs hurt when I walk. Mm -hmm. uh, claudication is the term that is utilized. So okay. you get cramps in your calf or your thigh or your buttock area that resolves after you stop walking. Now, the, uh, if you look at peripheral artery disease, it's really a spectrum of uh, pain with walking. Okay. Or actually, I should say asymptomatic disease where you feel nothing. Right where screening is important, to the point where you start to get symptoms of claudication, mm -hmm. and all the way can progress to what we call critical limb ischemia. Okay. Critical limb ischemia is a condition where you have rest pain in your legs, mm -hmm. or at the very latter stages, you can get ulcers in your leg from poor wound healing, uh, to the point where you can get gangrene, gangrene developing in your leg and risk amputation. So there's a big spectrum of it, when you look at uh, uh, the whole process of PAD. Okay. Now, when we talk about those things, who's most at risk for PAD? Yeah, so there, that's a great question. Um, there are t several traditional risk factors, but I will say the three uh, most common risk factors to keep in mind are diabetes, mm -hmm. smoking, and age. Okay. You know, hypertension and, and uh, elevated cholesterol are also risk factors. But those first three that I mentioned are very, very important. You know, if you look at smoking, let's start with that. Okay. Uh, smoking exponentially increases your risk of developing PAD. So I mm -hmm. tell my patients who are smokers that have uh, peripheral artery disease that need an intervention to treat a blockage, mm -hmm. that if you continue to smoke, the odds are that this process is going to continue and not get better. Mm -hmm. So smoking cessation is very, very key in the whole process of treating PAD. Now, age, let's look at age. Now, as you get older, if you look at various trials that have been done in the past, over the age of 50 is when the prevalence starts to increase. Uh, but over the age of 70, it continues to increase. Okay. And one of the things that we know in, our, in, in society today is that we're living longer. Uh, right. A lot of octogenarians mm -hmm. in, in our population right. that 
where the risk of just developing PAD is significantly higher. Right. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is diabetes. So if you look at diabetes worldwide, it is just growing in leaps and bounds. It is probably one of the worst disease processes that we're dealing with right now, but it is highly associated with peripheral artery disease because of its ability to incite infl inflammatory changes and progression of plaque buildup within the entire vasculature from head to toe. Mm, so wow. those are the ones to keep in mind when you think of the major risk factors. Yeah, and so and, and high blood pressure, high cholesterol, those feed into it, but those are the big three that is to keep in mind for correct. those most at risk. So how do you, you mentioned the importance of early detection. You mentioned those things that uh, you and Craig, Dr. Craig Walker talked about as your mentor. How, how is the PAD diagnosed? Yeah, so the first step in diagnosing PAD is really looking at the patient. You know, look and also using your fingers. Touch the pulse. Okay. You know, I can tell you we cannot touch the, the pulse in the coronary artery. Right. But we can touch the pulse in the leg. Yeah. And if you have an abnormal pulse in your leg, I can assure you that we know that we have, we have made a diagnosis of PAD. You know, if you don't have a pulse in your leg, that is a significant uh, red flag that needs to be addressed. So that's the first step. You can also look at the color of the leg. Okay. You know, you want to see if you have changes in the leg where if you raise the leg, it turns pale, and if it turns red when you lay your legs down. Th those are signs that you have significant blockages in your leg that need to be addressed. Um, there's other things you can notice. So okay. if you used to have hair on your legs and you start to notice that the hair on your legs is no longer there, that could be a sign of peripheral artery disease. So that's another sign that you can see. Okay. And of course, uh, you know, you, I would say that you don't want to see an ulcer on your toe. You don't want to see a black discoloration on your toe, but if you do, uh, it's something that you may want to get evaluated earlier rather than later, especially if you have PAD. But the physical exam is probably the key, okay? So that, right. I think that's the first step. Right. The second step in, in evaluating patients is screening. Okay. So I screen patients who have risk factors right. or any documented physical exam findings that uh, demonstrate PAD. Now, uh, the risk factors I told you about already. So right. if they have any of those, I will screen them for PAD. And the way we screen patients is with something called an ankle brachial index. It's an ABI. It's basically, we're measuring the, the pressures within the legs, which is blood pressure cuffs they put on, on your body to evaluate the flow. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not an exact test, but it's very specific. So if you have an abnormal ABI, okay, so mm -hmm. the number that you're looking at, it, it, it's a number, but if it's significantly abnormal, mm -hmm. That is highly suggestive of you having PAD, obstructive PAD. Here's another important point with that. Right. If you have a very abnormal ABI, okay, so this is very important too. Okay. So the lower it is, it is associated with higher mortality, death, okay, at five years. So that's Directly something related. to keep in mind as well. And at its lowest levels, when, when it gets to a certain degree, the risk of death is higher uh, at five years than uterine and breast cancer, wow. and then it's worse, lung cancer. So, so wow. ABI testing by itself is a very powerful test that we can use to screen patients. Mm -hmm. And additionally, if there's, there's other testing that we can do at mm -hmm. CIS, if we need to go further, such as arterial ultrasounds, where we right. can actually visually see the blockage, mm -hmm. or even CAT scans, where we need to address the anatomy of the blood vessels to see where the exact blockages are, because it could be in multiple levels of the leg. Wow, I, I didn't realize that it was so complex. I mean, I've always you know heard about pedal pulses, and mm -hmm. but you guys have got the tools to really be able to first touch and see, right? And then those next levels uh, can really determine how bad that is, and if that blood flow is that low, right. we're talking about an exponential uh, concern about death. That's correct. Within that five years, that like you correct. mentioned. Wow, and so knowing those things, being diagnosed, and the risk factors for it. Can it be treated? Absolutely. So first thing I will say is that we're not treating PAD. You know, we, one of the things that we specialize, I specialize in is the treatment of obstructive disease where we perform procedures such as uh, cleaning out the blockage with mm -hmm. a device ca called an atherectomy device where we can actually retrieve the clots and, and blockages from the leg. Right using angioplasty balloons to open up the blockages instead. Right. That's not my first step. 
Okay, so okay. that's my step down the road whenever right. the problems occur, okay. claudication, pain, or you have critical limb ischemia when it's very severe. Mm -hmm. But if we know that you have a PAD, you have a blockage of any kind, even if it's mild, we start with medical therapy. Mm -hmm. And we also address the polyvascular disease that I mentioned to you. Right. So we want to evaluate other areas such as the heart or, mm -hmm. or, or the carotids. So the steps are medical therapy. Mm -hmm. Um, and lifestyle modification. So when I talk about, I think the first step is obviously lifestyle modification. And I think smoking cessation is probably the key. Getting the diabetes under control is key. Right. And um, exercise if you can. Now, if you have severe disease, you may not be able to may exercise. Not, that may be one pain. thing you can't do. But, you know, from those are the first steps in, in dietary changes. You know, I talk, I think I was here in the past talking about cardiovascular disease and and I talked about moderating your diet and making sure you, you know, minimize your saturated fat intake. All of those things hold true for peripheral artery disease. I Same think. thing. Okay. You know, from the medication standpoint, uh, you should be on an antiplatelet medication such as aspirin if you can tolerate it or mm -hmm. Plavix if, if one of those two medications that helps prevent blockages from, from getting worse or, mm -hmm. or causing complete obstructions. And also... Uh, you know, I think in the vast majority of these patients, you can make an argument that they should be on a statin, which okay. is a cholesterol pill right. to help reduce your risk overall. Um, and, and I think uh, those are the types of things that you would do. But lifestyle and dietary modifications are probably the first thing that you would want to look at. Right. And you want to start there. You want to start there and then, and then work your way from there. Uh, I think you've touched on this a little bit already in your discussion, but let's talk about what happens if PAD is untreated. Yeah, so I, I told you it's an epidemic, and, and right. it's also a real, it's a real problem uh, mm -hmm. out in the country. You know, if it's untreated, uh, these patients can suffer. You know, if you have a, uh, if you left, leave it untreated and end up with an amputation, mm -hmm. which may or may not have been preventable with a simple angiogram uh, or diagnostic modality, you're, it, once you have an amputation, your risk of death uh, is 40% in two years. You, your risk of dying is 40% 40 in two years. 40% in two years. So there's a substantial morbidity wow. and mortality, you know, sickness and, 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 and chance of dying with that, with that amputation. Wow. Not all amputations can be avoided, but I will tell you that, uh, you know, our center is highly skilled in evaluating patients with very complex peripheral artery disease and treating those patients to try to avoid amputation. Right. You know, Dr. Walker, of course, has spearheaded this whole uh, PAD awareness and, and treatment in, in, you know, not just in HOMA, but around the world, to be quite right. frank. Mm -hmm. But I will tell you that uh, the incidence of amputations in our area, in HOMA, in Terrebonne, uh, in South Louisiana in general, has just gone down dramatically. dramatically. But yep. it's not the case around the country and around the world. So. Right. That's one thing to keep in mind. And if you do have an amputation, the risk with surgery is pretty high. I mean, I think the 30 day mortality with uh, amputation below the knee or above the knee is uh, roughly five to 10%. So right. it's a significant issue that need, you know, I think uh, left untreated can be a, can be a, a devastating consequence. Uh, well, Dr. Neer, I cannot thank you enough for coming on to share that information with us. But if people have concerns about PAD, they want to consult their doctor, or they can reach out to CIS at 985-876-0300, or you can go and look up information and, and connect with them by internet at www.cardio.com. Now, we wouldn't be good people or, or good parents if we didn't always make sure we supported those people who are having celebrations. That's correct. And so yeah. I'm to understand that Armand, is, your son is eight years old today. That's correct. So we want to send an absolute shout out. Happy birthday to Armand. Happy birthday <laughs> to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. So Armand, eight years old today. And I got to tell you, buddy, you're eight. Dad wanted to make sure that you knew that. Yeah. But I got to tell you, I'm excited for you because you and I, I'm only 10 days away. My birthday is in 10 days. And so I'm going to make sure that we're going to celebrate that again in 10 more days. We're going to do another shout out for you. So happy birthday to you. Thank Dr. Nair, thank you so much for thank being on. Thank you very on. much. And happy birthday to you. Thank you very much. All right, guys, that'll do it for us. Don't go anywhere. To Your Health with TGMC, up next.